Hi, I'm Lily. And I'm Julia. We are two high school best friends and college roommates with an interesting dynamic. And we are here to culture each other on different aspects in pop culture. We talk about all things music, movies, musicals, Disney, and more. This is Pop Culturing My Best Friend. Hello. Good morning. Welcome back. Welcome back to episode 10. Yes. Wow. Here Dang. we are. Double digits. Crazy. Woo! Yay, we're almost teenagers. <laughs> oh boy. Nice, nice. Today is April 14th. It is. Wednesday, 2021. Yes. I was just checking my because I was like, is it? But it is. Well, I almost said May again, oh. so... <laughs> I'm just excited for May for some Same. reason. Ooh, because we're out of school. Oh, yeah. We have, like, two and a half more weeks of school yeah. left. Then summer. Woo! And we just get to sleep. And just exist. And just exist. I can't Yeet wait. Ski. There's a hole in my paper. Where did that come from? I just printed this out. Oh, boy. All right. Nonsense Strange. news. Dang. <laughs> Nonsense news. Mine are long, so you go first. Oh, okay. Um, so I don't know if you have this note, but this is kind of applies to both of us. Um, we're both performing for the first time um, in a year. Over a year. Over a year. Yeah. yeah on Friday. Um, so it's our first time in front of a live audience. We, we've we posted it on our, um, our personal Instagrams and Snapchat, if you follow us, so whatever. Um, but we are doing like a variety show kind of thing at our high school um, nights on Broadway, and it's very exciting. Um, my second story is me and Marty's anniversary was on Sunday. Um, he came to church with me, which was an experience. Um, we got Panda Express for lunch, and we had sweet CCs. Uh, we hung out and walked around and looked at things in stores. Um, which is basically all there is to do where we live anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I wish we had more fun stuff. You can either, if you're cool, you go hang out on the crossings at Target. And if you're not cool, you go to Walmart. So Yeah. Yeah. There's like two sides of town. There's the Target side of town and there's the Walmart side of town. Yes. And technically, the Walmart side of town is um, richer than the Target side of town. <laughs> Because it's Williamson <laughs> County, <laughs> and they're like one of the richest counties in yeah. America. But um, I think Maury County is where it's at. Yeah, so. right. Because we have Target, and Target's the best. <laughs> um, my last story is that we, um, because there's only like two and a half weeks of school left, we've started moving out our stuff, mm-hmm. and I'm like kind of sad. Like the walls are so bare, and like all of my knickknacks are gone, and all her knickknacks are gone. Yeah, and. It's depressing. <laughs> yeah. Like, all the colors been stripped away, and now we're back in prison. <laughs> um, so that's all I have. My paper cut hurts big oh. bad. Um, okay, so, first piece of news, before I get into all of the Taylor Swift news, is that Olivia Rodrigo announced yesterday... April April 13th yes. that her album her debut album Sour is coming out May 21st and here is the track list because they're saying this is going to be the breakup album of the century right. okay, and nice. th- this is why listen to the names of the songs I'm, I'm already Sour is like such a cute name oh yeah I album. love it okay we have Brutal Ooh. we have Traitor Ooh. Driver's License one step forward, three steps back. Deja vu, good for you, enough for you, happier, jealousy, jealousy, favorite crime, and hope you're okay. So Ooh. I okay. Am I hired. mean, the songs that we've heard so far, "Driver's License" and what's it, Deja, Deja vu, vu, yeah, are great. So yeah, Ooh. so I'm yeah. hype. Everybody knows my favorite kind of songs are sad songs. So especially this... like. Like, sad, like, belty songs. Oh, yeah. And that's exactly yeah. what, like, driver's license is. Oh, so. yeah. So, okay. hype about that. Now, let's get into some Taylor Swift <laughs> news. So, um, if you didn't know already, this is going to be a Taylor Swift-centric episode. Oh, boy. Uh, because <laughs> Taylor Swift on 
Friday, Boy, whatever that did. was, whatever date that was. Mm-hmm. Um, she released her re-recorded Fearless Taylor's version album. I listened to it literally as soon as it came out. I got the <laughs> notification and I screeched and I sang the entire album besides like the newer songs I didn't know obviously um yes I enjoyed it I ran to Target the very next day I was like one of the first people at that Target to buy the album um because when I got there it was like it was in the morning and they had just put them out and Mm -hmm. I was like oh yes thank you so that was exciting um let's see okay so on the new bonus tracks from the vault i think my i think my favorite bonus song is that's when which is kind of surprising because that song is featuring keith urban and i'm mm-hmm. not a big Wait, fan of keith you. urban <laughs> yeah no i'm not a big country fan i like carrie underwood and old taylor swift and that's like the majority of the country that i like yeah. um but the song is really good and i think keith urban is actually really decent on the song and yeah. i enjoyed it a lot so i think that's my favorite vault track mm-hmm. um So, my next piece of news is that Taylor Swift was on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert yesterday, and everybody's freaking out about it, and here's why. Okay. I didn't watch it until this morning, because everybody was talking about it all day yesterday, and I didn't know what they were talking about, because nobody had released the full seven-minute clip yet until this morning. All right. So, I just watched it, and now I understand why people are freaking out. Why are we freaking There are out? so many freaking Easter eggs in that seven-minute interview. Okay. Because, so, everybody's making conspiracy theories that the next album she's going to re-release is her album 1989, uh, which was her mm-hmm. fifth album that she made. So, there's just so many things in... <laughs> Okay. this interview that confirms it um basically the whole premise of the interview is that there's a song on um the album called hey steven and stephen colbert has always had this theory that it's about him and so he confronts her on the show about it oh, and okay, yeah. she's like no it's not about you but she kind of seems like kind of stalkery about it almost like it is about him but she's claiming it's not okay. and she's like she's like yeah, no, I remember sending that to you at 513 Avenue on this drive facing the sidewalk. Like, like all kinds of crazy crap. It, it's all a joke, so. Um, but basically, she says a bunch of, a bunch of different numbers throughout it. Um, mm-hmm. The street number that she says adds um, is the date, like, May... 13th or May 6th mm-hmm. or something and apparently people have decoded that um May whatever that day is is going to be the day that she announces 1989 because that number has been like everywhere recently yeah. and then she starts like making up a fake social security number for him she's like she's like middle name Tyrone social security number blah 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 and apparently that also adds up to may whatever that day is and um she mentioned something about stephen king in it and like a specific series that came out in 1989 she mentions a specific job that stephen colbert had that when that he had in 1989 like there's all kinds of crap how is she does her research what in the world she is too smart she's too smart for any of us so yes 1989 we're thinking it's going to be announced in may and it'll come out probably sometime in August or something. Mm-hmm. So I'm hype about that. Yeah. Yes. Very interesting. I think that's all I have. The Taylor Swift like fan group is like a cult. Like how well, you guys <laughs> figure this stuff out is like terrifying. Literally, we're all like on crack. We're always on high alert. And can you blame us? She keeps doing this to us. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Like every turn there's something new. So we always have to be on high alert. So like mm-hmm. everything's a conspiracy theory. Like fair enough. I mean, yeah. That makes like sense. even um, oh man, she talked about sometime over the weekend. She like did a short little thing for some TV thing, and people were decoding like what she was wearing and mm-hmm. her earrings were heart earrings with an arrow through it, which correlate with the blank space music video where on the tree in like a two second scene 
mean, <laughs> there's a heart drawn on the tree oh with an arrow through it gosh. that looks exactly like the earring. <laughs> I can't. Okay. So, so that's awesome. yes, excitement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I think that's all I have. Now. All right. Yep, that's all I have too. So, that was not some news. Okay. Okay. So, next is Walt Lily World. And I have um, some pretty interesting stories, I think, today. So, let's start with a pretty general um, story. Um, I'm sure you've heard, like, the, the standards of, like, what cast members have to look like before. Haven't you? Like, I, I mean, I, that's, like, a fact I that people talk about. I know that like, there's, like, extremely high standards right. for cast members. So, recently, the cast member look has been updated. Nice. So, um, now um, it includes small tattoos, which appropriate tattoos of course i oh, think they said that can't dang. be like they can't be bigger than like like your hand, did you like, know that out. mandy moore has a sperm tattoo on her ankle sorry that i forgot <laughs> no and i now i do yeah um i don't remember why but i know she does okay yeah nice <laughs> Um, and it also includes uh, more inclusive hairstyles. Nice. Um, and I think um, one of the photos that they had included facial hair. And I don't know if that's been a thing that's been, like, a thing for a while. But I think I heard that they aren't allowed to have, like, facial hair at all. But I don't know. Now, what now maybe. Could I be a cast member? I don't know. <laughs> no, nah, they probably wouldn't cast me. I mean, depends on if you're cheerful and nice. I don't know if you can you can do that for that long like, all day. True, <laughs> true. I mean, yeah, I guess it is basically just like acting all day. Yeah. Like, man, I don't, I don't think I could. I would want to be one of the stepsisters, so I wouldn't have to do that. A stepsister or like a haunted mansion cast members are like paid to be gloomy all day. Yeah. Like, I wish. <laughs> I'd want to be Gaston. Sorry. You would be an excellent like, Gaston. <laughs> um, another pretty general story. Um that i was gonna say for last but i want to go ahead and talk about it because i don't know if you've seen it yet um, have you heard of not. the real lightsaber the yeah i think shane told me about okay that. yeah so it was revealed in a press conference there's no photo or video of it because in the entire interview like they were told not to record or take any photos uh -huh. and he pulled it out at the very end like right like it was fast like and then he as soon as he like revealed it he like cut the call and that was it so like no one got pictures of it or anything it like freaked everyone out nice so no one's seen the real lightsaber but he like turned it on and it was like real lightsaber and the last yeah. thing he said was it's real and he winked and that was it that, that's it yeah i think shane mentioned something i want to see the real lightsaber yeah that's so cool um so i have two disneyland stories so the first one you might be excited about, um, Marvel Avengers Campus is opening at Disneyland on June 4th. What does that mean? So that is a whole nother, like, land. It's oh, a, like, Marvel yeah. Avenger land. Um, okay. So there's, I know there's going to be an Iron Man ride. Um, they, uh, what's the superhero place? that universal? They have something oh, like yeah, that Oh, yeah. They have, like, a superhero island um, on Islands of Adventure. Yeah. But... That, that's been a whole, like, issue between oh. the two parks because they have that area. No, I don't want them to take it away from They're Universal. not going to. Good. At least not. it's not planned for a very long time because um, Universal, you notice how it's all comic-themed, right? Yeah. Um, Marvel Avengers Campus is going to be, uh, or Marvel Avengers Campus is going to be all, like, movies, like MCU oh, Universe, okay. which is what they own currently. Yeah. Um, okay. So I think that's good. They're filming with the actors for the rides, um, I think I've seen some pictures of that. So for the Spider-Man ride as well, which is, it's going to be weird that Universal has its own Spider-Man ride. Universal Spider-Man ride is superior. It is my it favorite ride. Anymore. No, it is. It just wait. listen. They, no. they formed an animatronic and he's no. able to swing like, um, Spider-Man. It's crazy. It's I really don't cool. care. <laughs> I mean, I love the, the Universal Spider-Man ride. It's my too, favorite ride at Universal. But. Yeah, I think you would love this. Well, I'm probably really... never going to go to Disneyland, so. <laughs> Same. Um, then my next uh, Disneyland story has to do with the Haunted Mansion. And Disneyland's Haunted Mansion updates were finally revealed, and it's super exciting. 
Um, I, as, as far as we know, they aren't doing anything crazy to the mansion besides just like they repainted it. Um, they replaced some carpet. They added some plants um, in the, the pet cemetery and some new pet graves um, that are cute. All the plants around their graves are like, like there's like catnip around the cat and then like there's roses around Rosie the pig. And like, you know, it's cute. Um, I should put bacon around it. <laughs> no. Um, but, um, there are two big things that they're talking about. So the first one that they added, they finally, um, added the April to December picture, um, which they had before, but they couldn't keep April to December when they updated the Haunted Mansion, um, a while back. Um, so April to December is a portrait. There are some portraits in the Haunted Mansion that, like, change. Um, uh-huh. they're, they're called changing portraits. And there's, like, like a nice picture that you'd see, and then it changes to, like, a creepy picture. So April de- to December is, like, I think it's, like, f- about, like, four or more slides um, instead of the usual two. So she starts as, like, a pretty, like, young lady, and then she, like, changes into, like, a really scary, like, old hag. So through April to December, she, like, changes um, to being, like, a scary old lady. And they couldn't keep this poster or the, this portrait because all the other ones changed within two, I think with like the lightning and like hers didn't like work out because she had too many slides. Mm -hmm. Well, they added her back and it's really, really cool how they did it. Um, And then the other big addition or actually removal potentially is the hanging corpse in the stretching room, which is really interesting because, um, so when you enter the haunted mansion, you don't go straight into the ride. You go into this like stretching room and they close the doors and you can't see any doors. It's just all like you're in like a room surrounded by walls. Okay. And there are portraits that like start off looking good. And as like the room stretches, you see. Oh, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Cause so the Ballinger family during 2020 Mm -hmm. because they couldn't go trick-or-treating they like decorated their house haunted mansion theme and he made a stretching portrait like he diy'd a stretching portrait yeah yeah so yeah they stretch and then you see like what fate lies beneath them so um and the ghost host talks about like oh there's no way out of this room but there's always my way and he's implying that his way out was he killed himself. So then the lights go out and, like, the scrim in the ceiling reveals, a, like, a hanging body. And, like, you hear, like, a, ah, like, a fake scream. And then everyone, like, screams. And it's just kind of, like, a funny, like, thing. And then, like, lights go back on. Then the door opens. Like, haha, trick you. Go. <laughs> so they're talking about removing the corpse, which won't make the joke make sense anymore. I don't know. Well, then wouldn't they just take the joke out? But that's the thing. Uh, the guy who voiced over this ride, his, he's died long ago. Oh. And he is the most iconic, integral part of the ride because he follows you throughout the entire thing and narrates it. His voice is literally, he, his voice is the Haunted Mansion. It's, like, oh. iconic. He is the man, the myth, the legend, like, Paul Vries. He's amazing. And if they get, if they cut that iconic part of audio that everyone knows, like, where the lights go out, everyone screams... That will cause some major controversy because the Haunted Mansion is basically the most popular, like, Magic Kingdom ride right now. So yeah. that, it would be a big deal. <laughs> so that's the thing. Okay. Yeah. So my last story is um, at Epcot. Um, they've been going over some, like, serious renovations right now. And they finally announced that Club Cool is reopening, which is super exciting because I missed it um, the last time we were there. And Mouse Gears is also reopening as the Creations Shop now. So a change in name, which is a little sad because I'll miss Mouse Gears. But yeah, Club Cool is awesome. Um, It was like, I guess it was a Coke store before they had like the Disney Springs, like Coca-Cola store. Mm -hmm. Um, And you go in there and they had like free sodas, like little like sample sizes. You get Mm -hmm. these little cups and you'd like try different flavors of sodas. Like, yeah, they have that at the Coke museum in Georgia from around the world. Yeah. Um, And it was really fun. And some of them were really good except for Beverly. Don't try Beverly. No, I know. I've been to the (laughs) Coca-Cola museum. We made Harrison try that when we first went there because he wasn't paying attention when they told us not to try it. That was funny. (laughs) Did he uh, enjoy Beverly? No. (laughs) 
That was funny. I want to go back. Yeah. <laughs> so that is all I have. It's a good time. Yeah. All right. So that was Walt Lily World. Thing. Nice. Nice. Woohoo. Next. Next. So next is repeat of the week. But I guess Yeet. I'll start first because I don't have a lot to say. And I yeah. know Julia has tons. So, um... Uh, because it's our Taylor Swift week, I guess. I, I was told to pick a Taylor Swift song. So I picked, like, the only Taylor Swift song I know. And it's Love Story, which is from, like, what? It's it's from, it's from Fearless. Fearless yeah. yeah. So it's the first album. Or it's not her, like, is that her first album? No, it's her second okay. album. So it's her second album, but it's the first album that I had ever, like, heard of her from. And Same. this is the first song that I'd ever heard, like, from her ever. Same. Yeah. <laughs> um. So I love this song when I was, like, like, a kid at this point um and I remember like listening to it when I would like play with like my littlest pets and like I had like this like little set like spider plushie and I can't remember what I named her but I think I might have named her Taylor or like Rachel or like something stupid and like I'd like listen to the song with my spider thing oh um so there aren't like a lot of like lyrics I want to talk about but like the whole song as a whole is kind of bop still like it still holds up mm-hmm. <laughs> um and it's, like, the only, like, mildly country thing I've ever enjoyed, <laughs> I guess. Like, it's not, like, country, but, you know, it's yeah. not her current music either. Um, I don't know. Like, I think the part where she's, like, and, like, Daddy said stay away from Juliet, that's, like, the best part in the whole song. Like, anytime mm-hmm. she sings it, it's so good. Man, how she do that with her voice, though? She good. <laughs> <laughs> that's how. Um, I think the whole song is really cute. I guess, like, we, um, we listened to it at our, like, last little dance, and it was really fun to just, like, sing it, um, with, with the ladies, and, like, we all just, like, danced and, like, had a good time, um. Yeah, it's one of those songs, this song and You Belong With Me are just, like, two of those songs that, like, everybody knows. Yeah, yeah. yeah, And so if you, like, play it, like, everybody's gonna sing along. Yeah, I mean, even, I think even Marty knew some of, like, the words to it. Yeah. So it's, like, yeah, it's a song that most people know. And it's not, like, anything, like, too deep to, like, really, like, like, pick apart. Oh, it's just, like, a classic, like, love story, like, Romeo and Juliet, except they don't die. They get married. They don't die. This song, so, if I remember correctly, this mm-hmm. song Taylor Swift wrote on her bedroom floor in within, like, a few minutes. I felt that in my um, head. After her dad told her she couldn't date this one guy. And she wrote oh, this whole song just cute. on her bedroom floor. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cute. Oh. So. Okay. So, yeah, it's a pretty simple, like, nice, yeah. like, fun song. So, I don't have a lot to say about it besides just, it's cute. And it's, like, the only song that I, like, really know. I mean, mm-hmm. obviously, I've heard, like, the, like, hits, like, Shaken Off and, like, all that stuff. But, like, that's not, like, oh. yeah. Yeah. I don't care for Shake It Off. Same. Just... <laughs> <laughs> like, it's a bop, and I'll dance to it, but it's yeah. not one of my tops. Definitely not. Like, honestly, you, in my brain, I don't, like, relate it to Taylor Swift anymore. Just, like, that time period. <laughs> it's just, oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Taylor? That's on 1989. Uh-huh. 1989 and Lover are her only real, like, pop pop albums um she started because she was country her debut fearless speak now and then red was like a half country Mm -hmm. but she started dabbling in pop and then after red was 1989 which was all like bubblegum pop stuff and then reputation was more like angsty pop (laughs) angsty pop (laughs) um which i enjoyed a lot and then Lover was more bubblegum pop. And then We Have Folklore and Evermore. Mm-hmm. So, Those are... How do you which even are, like, classify that? Just like... I don't know. Like, what is that genre now? I Taylor mean, it's like Swift. cottagecore. It's like Taylor Swift cottagecore. Cottagecore. She invented like, her not own... Not like lo-fi. No, she like, invented her own version of cottagecore. Yeah. That's just what she did. Yeah. I mean... This woman. Her performance, like, um, on, like, the... like like grassy like roof thing oh um, yeah the grammys oh yeah like that is the vibe that i wish like i want to like live in a mushroom house and like lay in a field of flowers and like bake bread all day and that sounds me nice. too <laughs> <laughs> me too so that's all i have so you go ahead and talk okay so the here. song i picked out it was a very big struggle for me to pick out what song i'm gonna do i was gonna pick out three. Oh wow <laughs> it was like Never mind. Uh, so I picked out one of my favorite sad songs. Okay. In like 
all of time. Uh, so I'm doing White Horse, um, which for my Taylor Swift fans, you know, it's the number five track on her album. And all the number five tracks on her album are either always the saddest oh or the most personal to her. <laughs> so uh, this one's one of my favorite number five tracks. Of course, it doesn't be all too well. That's like the superior, superior Taylor Swift song of all time. Uh, we can't mess with that. So, but I love this song. The song... Um, I connect with on a personal level mm -hmm. and I would listen to a lot at the beginning of 2020. So, uh, here are my favorite lyrics from the song. So, um, we got holding on the days drag on stupid girl. I should have known. I should have known. Ooh. Um, I was a dreamer before you went and let me down and now it's too late for you and your white horse to come around. Ooh, um, ooh. I had so many dreams about you and me. Happy endings. Now I know. And this next one is actually a lyric change mm -hmm. that she made on the new album. And it's very subtle, but okay. it's very powerful. So the original lyric is, because I'm not your princess and this ain't a fairy tale. Mm -hmm. But the ly subtle lyric change that like changes everything. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm not your princess. This ain't our fairy tale. Oh, yeah. Cause okay. now she's found her fairy tale with Joe Alwyn. Aww, that's so nice. Oh my oh god. My god. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna find someone someday who might actually treat me well, and she has. Oh, that's so nice. So anyway, I love this song. This song is like, you know, this guy just keeps like disappointing her and letting her down, and mm -hmm. um she's like you know i should have known like you right. know i don't know why i didn't see this i don't know why i had like this fairy tale built up in my head for the both of us and i'm so dumb i don't know why i even <laughs> thought of that and throughout the song she like he during the bridge he like comes back to her and he's like oh please forgive me and all this stuff and she's like i always wanted this but you know i'm sorry because i'm not your princess yeah. and this isn't a fairy tale nice so, yeah it's a great song yeah and i love it and it's like one of my favorite fearless songs mm -hmm. so very yeah. cool it's it's very good it's very sad it's one of those songs that like if it's raining and you're sad this is one of those songs <laughs> It's always so. a good time just blasting sad songs when it's raining. <laughs> it is on my sad vibes playlist. Nice, nice. <laughs> it's like the first song on there. Yeah. So, <laughs> yes, very, very good song. Love it, live it. Yeah. 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 Is that all you got? Uh, yeah. All right, that's all I have too. Okay, gang. It's waving through musical window. <laughs> It's the episode you've all been waiting for. Cats! Yeah. Yay! <laughs> so, I've been saving this musical actually for this week, specifically because of reasons that I can't reveal yet. Um, Why not? Well, I mean, I figured that we probably couldn't, like, give away what the set list is for the Mike on Broadway thing. Oh, but... well, once this comes this comes out the on day Friday. of the show, True. so it does not okay. matter. So I am doing Cats for Nights on Broadway. I'm playing Memory. Yeah. Um, so and, I was saving this for this week anyway. And I was putting it off until this week purely for the one reason that Taylor Swift was in the movie. Not her proudest moment, but she did it. So. She was an alright Mom Ballerina. I haven't seen the movie still, so her, I'm I'm waiting to watch it next year with their sweet mates. So. Yes. Her accent was kind of cursed, but like she acted it well. I mean, she just like is such a cat lady, and yeah, she has she really three, went there. She has three cats. Like a, any interview, she talks about how obsessed with like cats in general. Yeah. She is not the musical, but like yeah, the yeah, animals. So like, I see why she wanted to do it. right. The only like weird thing, like aside from her accent, was she was the only cat with shoes on. She was wearing heels. Yeah, strange. Yeah. But <laughs> that's not her fault. <laughs> Um, so yes, we are doing cats. So here's a synopsis. Based on T.S. Eliot's book of poems, Old Possum's book of practical cats, cats immerses the audience in a world of nocturnal jellical cats. 
Elliot's poems are brought to life as the felines dance and sing about their unique characteristics before gathering for the Jellicle Ball, at which one among them is chosen to ascend to the supernatural heavy side layer. Because that makes sense. And where did you get this synopsis? Playbill. Playbill.com. For all your theater needs, <laughs> even if they are cats. <laughs> so, right off the bat, the synopsis is like, what is that? What does that mean? Um, what is a jellicle cat? What's a jellicle cat? <laughs> Shoot me now, please. <laughs> you knew that was coming. Um, there's a whole song that explains. I actually didn't. Oh, um, really? <laughs> that genuinely scared me. <laughs> so jellicle cats um, in the songs are described as being like rather small they have like bright like black eyes they're like nimble and bright and happy they can be any color they're black and white um so they're they're basically just cats um jellicle cats i think came from in the poems, I think he called them jellicle cats, or they called themselves jellicle cats because they heard their humans calling them, like, dear little cats, and they got jellicle cats from that. And the dogs are called pollicle dogs because they heard poor little dogs, and that's where their, like, names came from. So their tribe are the jellicles, and they talk about pollicle dogs and how they're annoying sometimes. Dogs are superior. <laughs> I agree. Um, so cats is interesting. And you'd think that there would be some kind of story, but no, it's really, I there's a story, but it's not one that's easy to pick up on right away. So, yeah, it's a lot of, like, usually the musical has, like, an introduction for the characters, and they have, like, story, and they all have, like, a big, like, I want song, and then the rest of the musical happens, conclusion. Well, the, basically the entire musical until the very end is an introduction song. Yep. Um, so they introduce their tribe first, and then they introduce each other. Just one cat after the other cat. Until it's act two, and they're still introducing each other. Yeah. And then memory happens, and that's the I want song, and that's the only song people know. Um, and that's it. That's the end. <laughs> so, it's a strange concept, for sure. Mm -hmm. But it kind of makes sense. And they're, um... Okay. <laughs> the main reason you watch it's for the spectacle, not for the story. I don't watch it, so... Fair enough. There is no main reason but to watch the it. the main reason, if you were to watch it, is for the dancing. It's amazing. The choreograph, like, all the dance numbers are awesome. And the, some of the music, aside from memory, is pretty good, um, as well. And basically, I guess... That that's not a wonderful synopsis, I know. Like what in the world's a jellicle cat? What the heck's the heavy side layer? Um the heavy side layer is what they like you know how cats have like nine lives or whatever. So they reincarnate, yeah. I guess, into a younger cat. And um they have a competition at the jellicle ball to figure out who gets to be picked to go to the heavy side layer. And all of the cats introducing themselves, um, are, where the cats that introduce themselves are just introducing themselves just for the fun of it. But the cats that are introduced by other cats are candidates for the heavy side layer because people have to like nominate them. Like, oh, oh, this is a good like person and they should be reincarnated. Okay. Um so there's a cat that has been exiled for the group from the group. Um her name's Grizabella. And Grizabella is like an old, like washed up like glamour cat. And you're making a face. Sorry, I no, I just like thought of something. Okay, do you remember that TikTok where it was like, um, when musical theater characters are talking before they sing? Mm -hmm. And then it's like one of those is like, you'll never leave, Gritabelle. Kitchen witch is a kitchen witch forever. Oh <laughs> That's just gosh. what I thought of for some reason. Yes, I will love it. It's so funny. <laughs> Um, so Grizabella, she's been exiled from the group, and all she wants is to be welcomed back because she's lonely and she's wandering the streets by herself. And she keeps trying to get herself into the Jellicle tribe, and she sings little bits of memory here and there, and everyone's like, ew. They're, like, repulsed by her, and they run away. Um, and towards the end, she's just fed up, and she sings, like, the big, like, the song, like, memory. 
And finally, like, she's, like, welcomed back into the group. And she is nominated to go to the heavy side layer because, wow, this cat's ugly. And she'd be washed up. And she needs a new life. <laughs> um, so that's that's the plot. <laughs> There's really no main character. I guess you could consider Grizabella the main character. But she's really only in, like, three songs. So you don't see her very often. Yeah. Yeah. So um, do you have any favorite Songs. no which is okay um, <laughs> so my three favorites are the, like the big opener jellical song for jellical cats i like old deuteronomy a lot and the then, no, opener right? gets stuck in my head a lot yeah for some reason well, it just i don't know why so that crazy. one and rum tum tugger <laughs> uh it, if you had a, if you had a dream role who would it be um spadatomy spadat <laughs> oh <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so, um, we talked about Team Star Kid last week, and two of the members from Team Star Kid, Jamie and John, um, John introduced Jamie to cats, and mm-hmm. there's like this inside joke that uh, Jamie thinks that there's a character in cats named Spadatomy, and so they created a whole music video surrounding this made up character, Spadatomy. Yeah, and it's the Spidatomy funniest thing ever. Is- I guess a play on Macavity, like the, the villain, no. which there is a villain of the show. Which Spidatomy is, is a friendly cat. He's called Reliable. <laughs> uh, so he's like anti-Macavity, I guess. Yeah. Um, and it, that's funny. No, so, if I had, if I was like being forced to play a mm-hmm. character, I'd want to be Rum Tum Tugger. I think that would be beautiful. <laughs> I'd love to see it. Um, so I have two because I can't really decide. Jason oh. Derulo. <laughs> um so i am between victoria and rumple teaser i like them both a lot and victoria is really cool who's rumple teaser rumple teaser she is part of the duo act uh mungo jerry and rumple teaser they are um like the twin cats they're the little like cat bandits and they have like a like a really cool like acrobatic like number together um where they're like stealing from their humans and they're like haha we're sneaky uh, and they're in the movie. They are McCavity's like henchmen, but they're not like evil cats or anything. They're just tricksters and like stupid. Okay, <laughs> I like. Them. I've never heard of these cats before. Interesting. So this is when you start blocking it out. <laughs> <laughs> like, here are the cats I know. I know Taylor Swift cat. Okay. I know Idris Elba cat. Okay. I know Spadatomy. <laughs> I know James Corden. Okay. I know. But do you know their actual, like, cat names? No. Okay. <laughs> Rebel Wilson. Okay. Um, Judy Dent. <laughs> if you had to Who's name Who's any... Old Deuteronomy. Yes. Okay. Jason yeah. Derulo is Rum Tum Tugger. Mm-hmm. Can you name five actual <laughs> cat characters' names? I just want to test you. This okay. is just a fun, okay. stupid game. Old Deuteronomy... Macavity. I so was about to say Spadatomy. <laughs> um, Rum Tum Tugger. Um, Victoria. Uh-huh. Did you say Rum Tum Tugger twice? Did I? <laughs> I don't know. I can't remember. You either said Macavity or I don't think I did. I said, okay, we have... Old Deuteronomy. Old Deuteronomy, Macavity. Okay, yeah, yeah. Rum Tum Tugger. Victoria. Victoria. I almost called her Veronica. Veronica, okay. Um, oh, we should talk about Heather sometime. Okay. And um James Corden. <laughs> no, you can do it, you can do it, you got it. It's in the back of your head. You know this. There's so many, like, come on, you got it, you got it. Um, Magneto, Magneto is in that movie. He plays the theater cat. Is that it? I don't know what his Almost. name is. You're I don't know what his close. name is. He has like a super... Gus. Gus the Gus, theater cat. Gus, oh. Sure, that'll be your fifth one. You almost <laughs> did it. So close. Um, I thought you were going to say Mr. Mistopheles. Who? <laughs> Are you kidding me? He's like one. He's like kind of the cat's like mascot, I guess. Aside from Victoria, I don't know who that is. Really? Is he? He's the magic cat. 
Okay. Yeah. The one, the top hat cat in the movie. The yeah. one that Victoria has a thing with. No. In the movie. Yeah. Oh yeah, in the movie. Yes. I only know things about the movie because I watch reviews of it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Nice. You almost had it. Did you know that Judy Dench was supposed to be Grizabella in the original cast Mm -hmm. of Cats, but she wasn't able to for some reason? I don't remember why. So she played old Deuteronomy in the movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I did know that. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting fact. I want to watch the movie so bad. I wish it was on or something. It's a cat. (laughs) 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 Because a cat. It's better than a dog. That is all. End <laughs> end of end of waving through a musical window. Okay, we're gonna take a break mm-hmm. and then we'll be back with our movie. The movie. Yep. Thank you to Anchor for sponsoring Pop Culturing My Best Friend. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. It's free to use, which is always a plus in my mind. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will also distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. Creators can make money from their podcasts with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. I know that we have absolutely loved our experience using this platform. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. Welcome to the movie review. Movie review. Still don't get that, but okay. <laughs> um, this week we are doing the Lorax. Ah, oh, yes. Because Taylor Swift has a small role in this. Um... um it's yeah. a movie. It certainly is. I like it's like, up there with like the B movie. Yeah, that's how I would describe this I like, movie. I like I like the meme movies that we talk about, so like Shrek, the B movie again, the Lorax. Hopefully someday we'll do maybe the Cat in the Hat. Um, um <laughs> I don't know. So um, <laughs> the interesting movies that no one really knows what's happening in them. So yeah, yeah. the Lorax. The Lorax. Here is a synopsis from the internet. 12-year-old Ted, played by Zac Efron. He's 12? Yes. Oh, I have a note about that in a minute. Oh, no. Uh, Lives in a place virtually devoid of nature. No flowers or trees grow in the town of Sneedville. Sneedville. Ted would very much like to win the heart of Audrey, played by Taylor Swift. The girl of his dreams, but to do this, he must find that he must find that which she most desires—a truffula tree. To get it, Ted delves into the story of the Lorax, played by Danny DeVito, once the gruff guardian of the forest, and the Onceler, played by Ed Helms, who let greed overtake his respect for nature. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. So, yeah, that was one thing I had about this movie. Like, I was watching it and I was like, how old are these people? Mm -hmm. So, Ted is 12 and Audrey is 14. She's in high school. Oh, she's just a freshman. Yeah. Okay. She looks like she's like a junior, a senior, though. Yeah. No, she's 14. Okay. Um, That makes it slightly better, but still not great. Yes. I have a bone to pick with this movie. They freaking cast Taylor Swift and she doesn't sing once in this movie, not even in the big musical numbers. Yeah. I noticed that um, yeah. when they all have like short little singing parts, she doesn't yeah. have one, and I don't think Ted does either. He doesn't. That doesn't make any sense no. to me. Like what Grammy the heck? Norma gets a gets I'm a Grammy line. Norma. I'm old and I got gray hair. <laughs> she gets a line. <laughs> like what? And they don't let Audrey sing. And no, she, and the whole movie's revolving around her and getting her the treat. She, yeah. What in the world? <laughs> I know. That's so, so strange. I got a bone to pick with this movie. Yeah. It's that they don't let Taylor Swift sing, and that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. No, it doesn't. No. Huh. Yeah. I didn't, like, think about that until just now, but... Yeah. Interesting. Yes. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Well, um, so let's get it, get right into it. Let's, let's start out with the intro, because, man, is it an intro. Welcome to Thneedville. Thneedville. Um... 
we it's the opening they're going through Needville they and they're sing a big old out. song and Needville and it's like you know yeah whatever. they're like we got parking garages we pay for air because our air sucks yes and we can surf in the winter and we, we have battery powered summer. trees yeah and, and they have they can light up and a little yeah. boy went swimming and he came out glowing. That just tells you how bad and, like, nasty the yeah. environment is. And the main, like, head of the town, basically. Mm-hmm. And I don't think they have a mayor. I think it's just run by corporate greed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> his name is Aloysius O'Hare. Yeah. He sells air. Yes. And he's, like, a zillionaire. O'Hare's air. And he, like... He's a very tiny, it's like a Lord Farquaad kind of thing. Yeah. He has strange, like, like a strange, like, bob as well. And he's very short. Uh-huh. Um, so it's like Lord Farquaad, but, like, capitalism. Um, yeah. And he, he, like, skydives out of his plane and, like, all the people are like, oh, hair, we love you. And it's like a, a whole thing. So yeah. we have this intro and then there's this character that we only see like once at the beginning of the movie and once at the end he's like the air salesman yeah um, i think his name's sai we don't know it. me but my name's sai his voice is too good for this movie i'm just the o'hare delivery guy <laughs> like he has no right to sing that well in this in the lorax <laughs> what in the we world? stand sai <laughs> i wanted more of him <laughs> same like what in the world him and Taylor Swift should have had a duet together. Yes! Oh, yeah, that'd be great. So that's the, the intro yeah. to the movie. So what do you have next? Um, Zac Efron goes to talk to Taylor Swift. Ted goes to talk to Audrey. <laughs> so Ted, again, is a 12-year-old. And he has a crush on Audrey. I guess this girl that he hangs out with. And Audrey... She's like his neighbor. Yeah. Yeah. Audrey really wants... A tree because she loves nature specifically. A she's not tree. like other girls. She and at this point, nature. she's painting like a mural behind her house, right? Of like yeah, it's taking up the entire back of her house. Like, how did her parents let her do that? I have no idea. So she's painting her her truffula trees, and it's all like cute and sweet. And like, yeah, like, and wants- she's like, if somebody got me a tree, I'd probably marry them on the spot. And he's like, okay. oh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> and Ted. All he wants is just a kiss from Andre, and it's, that's his motivation behind the entire movie. Yeah. So they're at dinner mm-hmm. after that, and we meet Ted's mother and his and, and his grandma, Grammy Norma. Yeah, played by Betty White, Queen. <laughs> um, yeah. So Ted is like, "Where can I get a real tree?" And his mom is like, "You don't need a real tree. We got a disco tree." Disco tree. Um, and he was like, what? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Grammy Norma, she, she, she knows something. And she tells Ted's mom to go get, um, her dentures. But then she pulls them out of her back pocket, like, after she leaves. And she's like, okay, listen, kid. I know a guy who knows about some trees. Like, you need to go visit the one like, Grammy Norma sounds like a drug dealer. I mean, she could be, for all we know. So Grammy Norma is like, yo, you gotta bring him these like like a snail shell and like It's the shell of a great great grandfather's snail. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Whatever that means. Yeah. And you gotta go out in the city limits. You gotta go meet this man called the Wunsler. Ted's like What I, does that mean? What does Wunsler? Wunsler mean? I don't know. They call him like his mother calls him Wunsy, so that must just be his name. But that's like yeah. I mean I get it. It's like a Doctor Who's like universe. But like this kid's name is Ted and this guy's name is the Wunsler. Yeah. Well, Ted's not in the original right. story. But they could have come up with like a Seuss name for him as well. True. I'm Grammy Norma. I'm old and I got gray hair. <laughs> Um, so, Ted has this, like, little, like, motorcycle thing. He's 12, by the way. He doesn't have a license, but he can drive this, like, motorcycle thing, and he, he'd be zooming on it. Yeah. So, Ted goes to find the one slur, mm-hmm. and while he's off doing that, we see this ad for O'Hare Air, mm-hmm. uh, now in plastic bottles. Oh, boy. And my takeaway from this is that their tagline is, O'Hare Air, please breathe responsibly. 
<laughs> I thought it was really funny. Um, so my the only note I have about the scene is um, O'Hare is like Lord Farquaad, but somehow worse. <laughs> yeah, his um, hair is a crime. Yeah, his bangs are like cut like <laughs> above his hairline somehow. It's like cursed. Yeah. how do you? I don't even know. How I don't know. But basically, while they're showing O'Hare this ad, they see that Ted is like trying to leave the city limits, and they're mm-hmm. like, "Um, what's going on?" Mm-hmm. And then we go back to Ted. Yeah, and he gets out of so Sneedville is like surrounded by this like wall yeah so really nobody small. can get out yeah and uh so he goes beyond the wall and when he goes beyond the wall he sees like the truth of reality like it is like smog and there's gray sky gray there's like tons of cut down trees like mm-hmm. pollution all kinds of crap mm-hmm. and he's like oh shoot <laughs> yeah so he's zooming on his little motorcycle and the trip to get to the Winslow's house is scary he's like going down hills and like he tries to like launch himself off this like thing and it just goes straight down and he's like flying down a cliff and then back up yeah um then he finally makes it to the Winslow's house and he knocks on his door and this trap sets off mm-hmm. um so this like arm comes out and grabs ted and pulls him up to the window we see this strange little man inside, just his eyeballs and, like, his mustache. Uh, he's like, who are you? And Ted's like, I'm Ted. Yo, I got you some chills or whatever. And the ones are like, okay, I'll tell you my story. <laughs> yeah, so we begin with his origin story. Yes. And we flash back to it's young boy. e-boy once later. Yes. And um, he's leaving family. home. They're awful. His family is terrible. Yeah, he's leaving his family. He's leaving home to go sell his invention. The Sneed. Um, and he finds paradise. And we, like, there's all kinds of, like, truffula trees and, like, singing fish. I hate them. uh, I have so many notes about the fish. They're these little bears. They have a name. Let me see if I can find it real quick. What is that sound? I don't know. There's, like, someone... There's, like, maintenance happening outside, and it's <laughs> terrifying. Um, anyway, so the fish kind of sing him through paradise, and yes. he's like, this is it. This is the place. <laughs> <laughs> now, okay, so if you didn't know, um, Ed Helms also plays Andy Bernard in The Office. Yes. And once you know that, you literally cannot watch no, the Lorax the same. Because it. he, like, is playing Andy Bernard, basically. It's terrifying. Um, so he's just, like, always, like, breaking out into some kind of song. And mm-hmm. so he starts um, breaking out into, like, na, 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 And the animals go along with him, and they start singing with him. Yeah, it's and, cute. Um, yeah. So the bears and, and the fish, they all have names, but I cannot find them. So, oh, well. They're little bears and little fish, and I hate the fish. Um, this is a movie made by the same company that made the Despicable Me movies. Illumination. Yes. And these fish are this movie's minions, if that helps put in perspective how annoying they are. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would say, though, that the minions, at least in the first Despicable mm-hmm. Me movie, have more charm yes, than the fish. I agree. I agree. So, the fish are just kind of there. There. Although, the fish do have a really funny moment that I did enjoy. Um, but... Um, so Ted has this like he he traveled by like donkey and like not Ted the onesler oh sorry yeah yeah the <laughs> onesler he 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 traveled by donkey and like covered wagon and he like sets up his tent or whatever and he's like throwing stuff out of his wagon and he's like throwing like little axes and like tools uh-huh. and like he's like seconds away from killing these animals and yeah. like and there's that one point where like this like i don't know what you call what is that tool called um i don't know it's like a two-pronged like fork kind of thing but it's like a gardening thing and he like throws yeah. it and it like lands like around the neck of uh, i think the little bear and no it lands around the neck of like a duck oh bird yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's a little bird yeah 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 um and that gave me anxiety <laughs> so um, all of the, like, the critters get, like, angry mm-hmm. at the one slur, and he tries to win them over, and he, like, pulls out a bag of marshmallows as a shield because this little bear is trying to, like, maul his face. Just and, it, and it opens up the bag of marshmallows, and, like, this stream of 
sugary goodness is showered all over the forest. Yeah. And this whole scene's like a fever dream of marshmallow. Yeah. But then the one slur cuts down a tree. Oh, shoot. Oh, no. And everybody's like, what just happened? Yeah. And they all gather around the tree and it starts making noises. And a beam of light shoots out of the stump. And the Lorax. The Lorax. He's here. The guardian of the forest, the speaker of the trees, yes, Danny the DeVito. Danny Dorito himself mm-hmm. comes out. Yep. And he's very sad. And yeah. they all have like a little memorial surface for the first tree that got yeah. shot down. It's like really sad. And they're holding hands and like they're like around it. Uh, and they like surround it with little rocks. Mm-hmm. And it's it's cute. Yeah. So the Lorax is like, I gotta talk to this Onceler guy, mm-hmm. that idiot. And the Onceler tries to warn, or er, the Lorax tries to warn the Onceler about like cutting down trees. He's like, bad things are gonna happen, dude. Mm-hmm. And the Onceler's like, Psh, whatever. These creatures need the trees. Yeah. But the one was like, whatever. And then we flash back to um, him talking to Ted. And he's like, all right, come back tomorrow and I'll tell you the rest. And Ted is like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> so then we cut to a daydream. Yeah, Ted is daydreaming at breakfast. And this guy is weird. Yeah. I- so it's Audrey's <laughs> birthday and his daydream. And she's like, oh, she's making her wish, and she's like, oh, I can't tell you, or, like, the laws of the wish or whatever won't come true. And then Ted's like, I know what your wish was. And you see him (laughs) playing a grand piano at the top of some stairs, and he, like, comes down, and he's got a milkshake for some reason, Mm -hmm. and he just throws it, and he's like, I have a tree for you. And Audrey's like, oh, thank you. And she goes to kiss him. And you see him. It cuts back out of the the daydream. And he's kissing a cereal box. And his mother says, oh, you're kissing that cereal box again. Like, this has happened before. Yeah. Um, Which I And he's like, I just just really love this cereal, Mom. (laughs) Um, Yeah. And the grandma encourages him to go see the one slayer again. Mm Mm-hmm. So he um. is on his way, and he, at this point, he runs into O'Hare. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're like, "We're watching you, kid." Yeah, and O'Hare, idiot. like, as he's leaving, he, O'Hare's surrounded like these really large bodyguard dudes, yeah. and there's like they all look the same, and there's several of them. Yeah. But he uses their hands as stairs in this yeah. scene, and I always thought that was really, really funny. O'Hare has a quote in this. That didn't make any sense to me, okay. so I had to write it down. He said, um, I'm Frankenstein's head on a spider's body. <laughs> Which didn't make any huh. sense to me. <laughs> no, same. Interesting. Um, yeah, it was strange. So after this run-in with O'Hare... And his goons. <laughs> and um, his goons. He's back at the Onceler's and the Onceler's continuing his story. Yes. Uh, the Lorex decides to play a prank on the Onceler to try and scare him away. Mm-hmm. And get the animals to steal his bed. <laughs> yeah, and there's one quote while they're ste- stealing his bed. Like, who taught you guys how to steal a bed? <laughs> As if they've done this before. <laughs> also, okay, how did the Wansler fit all of this crap into his small wagon? Because that's like a full, like, brass bed. There is a... Yeah, I have not a clue. Which is, like, really heavy. I mean, when you... When we talk about his parents and, like, um, his family's RV later, I... It's Seuss laws, man. It doesn't make any sense. Anyway, so they get his bed into the river, and they're like, yeah, but oops... One of the bears is on the bed. What and is the little bear's name? I think his name is Pipsqueak, Pipsqueak or something like that. Yes. Something dumb like that. Pipsqueak is on the bed with uh, the one slur. And it's heading towards some dangerous rocky looking like river and terrain. Yeah. So they're like, oh, we gotta see a Pipsqueak. Oh, and the one slur is like falling, like halfway falling in the water this whole time. Like, how is he not awake? Great question. None of this makes sense. Uh, so the fish are singing. Like, of the Mission Impossible theme, and I hate them. Oh, yeah, I thought that was really funny. Like, while they're going to steal the bed, the fish are like, 
<laughs> I thought that was really funny. And then um, while they're going down the river, they sing like the funeral march. Yes. And that, okay, that was the only I moment that where that I enjoyed it. really thing. funny. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. Um, yeah, so they end up getting the onceler and the bear off the bed. The onceler eventually wakes up. I don't remember yeah. how he wakes up. And then he sees that they're about to go down a waterfall. Yeah. And the Lorax saves them. He drops a giant boulder on the bed to like launch them on the land. And then <laughs> the onceler lands like really hard on the ground and mm-hmm. he's just like dead basically. And he tries yeah. to the Lorax tries to give him CPR and then he grabs two of the little bears and he like rubs them together until they make a lot of static electricity and they try to revive him like that. And it works. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, I mean Ted even said uh, not Ted. The Wensler even said, like, oh, I could see I could see the light. I was going towards the light, but you saved me. So somehow they revived him. Yeah. Um so then it's the next morning, and the Wunzler wakes up to the Lorax sleeping in his bed with him. And then all of the critters are all over his house as well. Yeah, they've taken over. They're like, oh, you just look so comfy, and we are so tired. And it was so warm in here. Yeah. And they're like, what's for breakfast? <laughs> and they open the fridge to um, a larger bear. Just downing just a whole stick of butter. Literally me. I don't... <laughs> No, if you okay so one thing about me is i started doing this thing junior year where any restaurant i'm at i want to try the butter like oh, if yeah. they have like butter on the table for bread and stuff i have to try the you butter. you did it at waffle house oh, oh no that, it's yeah. a tradition at waffle house now that i just eat straight up eat the butter because mm-hmm. i've become a butter connoisseur and waffle house butter is like legitimately straight up chemicals but it's delicious <laughs> um yeah i it's oh i love butter and i wonder why i can't lose weight anyway so (laughs) the once lyra is like oh i gotta go into town to sell my invention and they're like what is his need which looks like a onesie but it's got like a hole in it and yeah. it's got like three extra arms and yeah. so this need is able to do several things it could be a scarf a hat it can wipe up spills because it's absorbent because um, of the microfiber yes um it can be all kinds of things and they talk about it in the next song like it can be a butterfly net like a tightrope yeah yeah it multi-purpose <laughs> yeah um so he goes into town and he's there for like days and people are throwing tomatoes at him because they're like you idiot that's just the onesie with the hole and three yeah. extra arms and there he sings his, the theme song um everybody needs a need of uh, that's that's just like like his jingle uh for his product mm-hmm. and my next note is why do they hate him so much because why not it's like <laughs> this guy's just sitting in town like playing like a nice song on his guitar showing off like he's wearing it as a, as a scarf at this point so they can't see the extra hole anyways oh yeah um and he's just singing like oh everybody needs this need and like all these people are like throwing things at this guy like the people of this town are savages <laughs> yeah i don't know what the i don't remember what the name of the town was yeah. i remember seeing it somewhere but i don't remember what it was called i don't know probably like Hoogville or something. it was something ville I do know that. I don't remember what it was. I meant to write that down, but I didn't. So the Wunzler gives up and he throws it and it lands on this woman's head. Now, okay, this girl, something I noticed that I've never noticed. I mm-hmm. watch this movie often for some reason, like on accident. I watch it all the time. Mm-hmm. And she, the need before it gets on her head, she's wearing glasses and she was also wearing like a braces retainer thing. Mm-hmm. Which I've never noticed before. And as soon as the need hits her head, it, like, goes away. Like, it's like, you're cool now because you have a need on your head. So you don't need glasses or braces. And I'm just like, what kind of message are you sending to your audience? Yeah, wait. I've never noticed that before either. Yeah. I noticed that last night for the first time. (laughs) Interesting. But everybody's like, oh, my God, you're so cool now. You're like hot (laughs) because you don't wear glasses or braces and you have this need 
Look at your hat. Wow. It's wow. green. It's like literally so ugly. but Yeah. And like the like sleeves are hanging out and it's like wild. So the one side goes home and he is sad. He's making pancakes. <laughs> and he makes, um yeah, he makes a big old stack of pancakes for all the critters and he's just like throwing them at him and they're all just like devouring these pancakes. Yeah. And they hear a sound outside. Uh, oh. Um, has he made the promise? Yeah, he has. Okay. One thing that we, that we glossed over, um, the, the Lorax made Ted promise, um, no, not Ted, the Lorax made the once lawyer promise not to cut down any more trees. Mm-hmm. And he, I mean, he kept, he kept his promise for a while and they all became like a family and they were all like having fun and like, yeah, they're all so they're close. all cool now. Mm-hmm. Um, but once they hear this noise, they go outside, and they see that there's, like, a ton of people singing the Need theme song. Giant flash mob, led by the girl with the hat. Yeah, and they're like, everybody needs a need. And he's like, oh. So then we go back to Ted is back in town, Mm -hmm. zooming around with his grandma, Mm -hmm. and they run into Audrey, and Audrey's picking up paint, and she mm-hmm. goes back to her house, and her mural has been painted over, and it there's a sign that says, like, property of O'Hare, O'Hare. or yeah. something. So Ted returns his grandma to wherever she was going, <laughs> and he starts going to see the one slur again, and he sees the control panel that he's been using to get out is also boarded up and says property of O'Hare um, air. Mm-hmm. So he needs to find a new way to get to the one slur and he does by like scaling buildings and going over roofs and stuff and jumping the fence which he should be dead this kid is 12 he shouldn't be driving a motorcycle like this anyways it's like a motorcycle like unicycle too yeah i don't know oh well so he gets back to the one slur's house and the one slur is like all right where was i all right so um the one slur's family in the story uh shows up and is like oh we're so proud of you you're so successful we knew you could do it and they had been telling him this whole time like oh you're not gonna amount to anything once he yeah and so they're like trying to harvest um the tufts of the tree the truffula tree yeah Yeah. and they're like uh this is taking too long we should just cut them down and the Mm -hmm. and the the Lorax, no, the one slur is like, I mean, I guess if we cut down a few trees, it'd be fine. And the mm-hmm. Lorax is like, oh, what about your promise, bruh? And he's like, it'll it'll be okay. Everything will be okay. And the Lorax says, which way does the tree fall? Mm-hmm. The tree falls the way it leans. Be careful which way you lean. Yes, very cryptic. Um, so... This whole problem could have been avoided if they weren't grabbing tufts, like, a singular tiny little tuft at a time. They could have just, like, I mean, yeah. obviously the one slur can invent things really well. And he does uh-huh. that later when he starts chopping down trees. He could have just made one of those, like, axe machines, but with, like, a bunch of grabbers. So, like, grab yeah. a whole bunch of tufts at once. Mm-hmm. Or why don't they just shear the trees? I don't know. Because they're dumb. But we get... The most iconic song. Oh, yeah. How bad 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 can I be? be? Um, Good song, good song. Um, Stuck in my head all the time. This song was originally supposed to be a song called Biggering. And, yeah, yeah, there's, like, a big debate about, like, that should have been left in the movie Mm -hmm. instead of how bad can I be. But, honestly, I think how bad can I be is more of a bop than Biggering. I think Biggering has a better message to it, but, like, how bad can I be is more of a bop. Mm -hmm. I mean, and he he does make some references to, like, Biggering, like, later in the song. Yeah. But I, I don't know. I think if there was a way to, like, have both somehow in there, that would have been cool. But yeah. We need, you know what this movie needs? More musical numbers. Right, because that's the best part of the movie anyways. Yeah. We need more bops. We need a Taylor Swift Ted duet. Like, yes. that's what I need in oh, my life. Oh, cute. Um, where were we? Anyway, so. How bad can I be? How bad can I be? His business is growing. The trees are dying. Yes, as he's singing, um, um things are multiplying. Um, he, they're chopping down trees. He makes these uh, machines. He makes a factory, and like all the trees are going down. 
he puts on this like green like suit and like top hat and like clothes. green you know what green represents money money money, money. yes so he's raking in the cash his family loves him he has his own like yes. basically like a mansion like castle the one slur is a fashion icon he is <laughs> his guitar starts like multiplying so it becomes it ends up like as like a double guitar towards the end yeah it like gets cooler um throughout the song he has these like shades on he's living his best life yeah um yeah so after his song's over he's in his office and the lorax is sitting on like the ledge of his little balcony and he's like yo fam how why did you do this and like um what did he say before the last tree falls he Bro, I don't know. He's just like, uh, you broke the promise and <laughs> you suck. Yeah, basically. <laughs> and he's like, look at that. And then they chop down the last tree. And he's like, oh, oh no. How am I going to make more needs if the last tree was chopped down? Yeah. And um, from here, everything falls apart. Mm-hmm. So um, they had renamed the town Sneedville. And the one slur was everywhere, like on billboards and stuff. And after the mm-hmm. last tree fell, all that kind of went away, except for Needville, like its name. So um, yeah, we get O'Hare's origin story. Yes. He's like cleaning up after all of this mess, and mm-hmm. somebody else who's working with him is like coughing, and he's like, uh, 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 "Oh, I wish there was clean air." And O'Hare's like, "Yeah, yeah." Who's the next like big like millionaire inventor is gonna be? And O'Hare's like, "Yeah." Hmm. So that's where the air will come from eventually. Um, yeah, and everybody's like, and by everybody, I mean like all the animals are leaving because everything's Migrating. polluted, and there they there's no food, there's no trees, like nothing. So they have to go, mm-hmm. and the Lorax is like, "Look at what you did, you stupid!" and mm-hmm. grabs his butt and he flies up into the sky. I wish I could leave like that like what an exit like if i could fly right away from my problem just by like grabbing my butt and just floating up into the sky and that would be the yeah. most amazing thing in the world and this is where we get like the lesson of like the story from like the book and these things like unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot nothing's gonna get better it's not mm-hmm. um yeah so that's the end of um the O'Hare's, not O'Hare, the Onceler. There's too many names. Yeah. Uh, the Onceler's story. And mm-hmm. at the end of the story, he gives Ted the very last truffula seed. Which he hasn't planted. Why? I Wait. don't know. So, um, Ted's driving back with the seed. Um, he's spotted by some cameras, but he has it. So, um, he makes it back into his room. He's trying to figure out, like, what do we need to plant the seed? And mm-hmm. um, a bottle of water spills on it as he's, like, rushing out of the room because his mom's calling him. And when he gets down there, his mom um, has some visitors, some of his O'Hare and some of his goons. <laughs> and um, O'Hare, like, asks his mom for a single cookie, and she goes off to get it, and they start interrogating Ted. Yeah, they, like, tear apart his room. They're like, we know you have the seed! And he's like, what are you talking about? And so they're, like, tearing apart his room trying to find it. Because it's not there where he left it. Mm -hmm. And the mom comes in and she's like, um, you idiots. What are you doing? Get out. And she she kicks them out. And they find out that Grammy Norma has the seed. And it started sprouting. Which, like, what? No, that's not how that works. Trees don't grow that fast, but... No, they don't. Uh, so now Audrey is there too and he shows her the seed and they're like we gotta plant this in the middle of town for everyone to see Mm -hmm. and that's when the hijinks begin yes um before this though um when like Ted showing Audrey the seed like we should kiss now and the mom like blocks them like we don't have time for that and then they go they go go, we have a little time (laughs) we have a little time (laughs) so then they go to plant the seed yeah. And um, hijinks ensue. They're all driving to try to get to the middle of town. Um, they they get there, and they they realize that the ground in the square is not real ground. Yeah. So Grammy Norma gets in like one of those like big like um, construction like things that dig in the ground. I don't know. Yeah, I yeah. 
and she gets in it and she she's trying to like maneuver it to dig in the ground but she accidentally knocks um the big like o'hare statue in the middle of the square um she, she knocks its head off and it lands on the ground and it breaks uh, whatever was covering the actual ground mm-hmm. so then o'hare he like runs into them and now this whole thing happens yeah and a song ensues they're like talking about trees and like photosynthesis and, then and O'Hare's like I am wounded you have lied <laughs> it's like it's so dramatic and he's trying to convince the people of Needville that Ted and co are liars and that photosynthesis isn't real that you won't get free air stupid <laughs> So, Mr. O'Hare mm-hmm. asks um, one of his O'Hare Air delivery guys to say something. And it's Sai. It's Sai. You don't know me, but my, my name's Sai. I'm just the O'Hare delivery guy. <laughs> uh, so, he starts singing about how he thinks we should let the tree grow. Mm-hmm. And then everybody joins along. Yeah, and it's my name's Dan, and my name's Rose. Our <laughs> son Wesley kind of glows, and yes. that's not good, so we suppose we, we should, should let, let it grow. grow. Let it grow, let, let it grow. grow. You can't reap what you, you don't sow. sow. Anyway, um, so they're all in agreement that <laughs> we should let the tree grow, and then Mr. O'Hara comes in with his own verse, and he's like, my name's O'Hara, I'm one of you. I live here in Thneedville, too. Um, and he's like, maybe I should change my point of view. Like, nah, I say let, let it, it die. die. Let, let it die, die. let it die. Let, let it shrivel up and die. die. Come on, who's with me? No, no one. You greedy dirtbag. <laughs> and so they end up uh, blasting Mr. O'Hare into the sky with like a jetpack thing. Yeah. yeah. And they plant the seed. Mm-hmm. And, and it's cute and Audrey kisses him on the cheek. Yeah. Like, oh. Happy endings for all. And we go to the onceler oh, yeah. is gardening and he is watering. Okay, he has like planted a field of truffula trees. Mm-hmm. And he's watering them with a watering can. <laughs> These are trees. Uh, they get their water from rain, and he's watering them. Well, but no, his... not even that. Like, I understand, like, watering them. Right. Like, but, but, like, like y- a, a watering field. can. That is a field. That this is, man this is an inventor. Big. Like, make, like, a sprinkler system off the top of your, like, super tall Bro, house. Bro, legit, you're going to end up watering, like, three. It's and then have tired. to go back and get more. Yeah. Um. So... He's cleaned up his house. He's broken the boards up on his window. And um, everything going good for him. And then all of a sudden, he sees this light shine down from the heavens. And the Lorax descends Danny upon Danny Dorito. <laughs> um, and he's like, you did good. Nice mustache. And they hug. And it's cute. Um, yeah. And that's it. That's basically the whole movie. Yep. You know, that's the Lorax. That was the Lorax. Yeah. It's a good movie. They had a, so the Lorax movie, they had a bunch of partnerships with stuff mm-hmm. during this. And there's a whole, like, big thing about it. Um, there's an, a video of film theory about it. But one of the partnerships I remember them having was with IHOP. And I think that's, like, I've only been to IHOP a few Is that times why in my so life. so many pancakes in the movie? I don't know. I just know that when this movie came out was like one of the few times I've been to IHOP Mm -hmm. and with every kid's meal you got, you got like a package of seeds. Aw, that's cute. (laughs) And I don't think I ever planned something. They might have like (laughs) been putting the the pancakes in so you like subconsciously crave pancakes and you have to go to IHOP. Probably. I do remember them doing that. And they had like a car dealer's like deal Huh. Which was weird because cars equal pollution. So yeah, like that. and cars equal adults, which are not their target audience either. Yeah, no, <laughs> that's what the film theory episode is about. Interesting. So, yeah, um, that's yeah, that's the Lorax. the Lorax. So I guess now we're gonna take a break, right? Yeah, and we'll get into our games. <laughs>
welcome back. It is time for sleepover camps. Yeah. Uh, so we are doing Never Have I Ever. Yeah. And how we're doing it is like, I have some Never Have I Evers, and we're just going to say if we've done them or not. Okay, yeah. Because <laughs> you can't really see us um, unless you are stalking us from some point in our room, and please don't do that. I don't know how you would be able to do that, because they're literally, like, cinder-blocked in, and we're in the dark. <laughs> like They are in the closet and under your bed. No. <laughs> anyway. um, So, never have I ever gone on a blind date. Have you ever gone no! on a blind date? Not at any point I, I've even <laughs> ever considered something like that. Have you? No. Okay. I was about to say, we are just now adults. I don't think you can do that kind of stuff, just chilling in, like, school. Sure you can. Um, I've been on, I've been blind playground wedding to somebody before. <gasps> oh, that's a sad story, though. Oh, no. Yeah, we're not going to talk about that. Um, never have I ever ghosted someone's text. I don't think have so. you? Not consciously, at least. I have. Really? 100%. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. I I mean, sometimes I'm I'll, very passive aggressive. Sometimes I'll like read messages and I just forget that I read them and I don't respond. So it's no, like not on I'm, purpose. I'm like, I've definitely done this before. I'm passive okay. aggressive like that. So. I, can't, I can't remember a time where I have, but I might have. Who yeah. knows? No, if there's a time where it's like, I don't think this person should be in my life, but like, I don't want to deal with conflict, I'll just straight up ghost them. Oh, like, yeah. yeah, no, I've done that a few times. Never have I ever used someone else's toothbrush. Ew, no. Have you? No, I haven't, but uh, somebody has used my toothbrush before without me knowing. Really? Yeah, that was a big thing. So basically, uh, Harrison essentially used my toothbrush for about a month and <gasps> never told me. Okay, so this has always been a thing. Okay, ever since we moved, like, in our house in Spring in Spring Hill, like, my bathroom stuff is on the left side of the sink and his is on the right side of the sink. For some reason, he got confused one day and thought that the red toothbrush on the left side of the sink was his and was using it for a month. And Ew. I didn't know. And so he was like brushing his teeth one day and I was like, what toothbrush are you using? And he's like, the red one. It's mine. And I'm like, <laughs> no. That's my toothbrush. And he's like, since when? And I'm like, you idiot, since always. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I did not enjoy Ew. <laughs> gross. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gross. Ew. That's so nasty. <laughs> so gross. Uh, yeah, so I've never used someone else's toothbrush, but Harrison has definitely used my toothbrush before. Mm -hmm. Um, and then last one. Never have I ever pulled an all-nighter. No, I can't. I have. Really? Many times. Yeah, I don't sleep. Oh, well, I, I mean, I've stayed up, like, pretty, pretty late. I think the latest maybe is, like, three, something, but I don't, I, I can't uh, stay up all night. I would die. I can. I, like, Easy. Work, I, like, work on a schedule, and if I'm off the schedule, I'm, nah, <laughs> not happening. <laughs> what <laughs> nothing um yeah that's all the ones i have okay yeah uh shout outs for this week are for people who guessed the movie correctly um mm -hmm. i posted it i posted the first hint which was orange and, and somehow two people got it and we got the answer in 15 seconds and i honest to god don't know how that happened it like is literally not even just the word orange that's it not not tree not any Seuss or anything. Orange. Orange. How you people do this is, I... I don't know. Okay, so me. our first person that um, guessed it correctly was Madison. Mm -hmm. And she wants us to shout out her YouTube channel. And at this very moment, I have it written down, but I'm scared it's not what the name of her YouTube channel. Okay, I did get it right. So go check out our YouTube channel, Madison Taylor. She posts on there every once in a while. It's 
it's it's it's Gucci. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So go check that out. Uh, she was the first one to get it. And in second place, we have Kinsey to get it, who was, like, literally right after Madison got it. Yeah. And in third was my brother, Harrison. So. Oh, nice. Yes. Uh, that is all I... toothbrush ha- snatcher. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, still salty about that. Mm-hmm. Not gonna lie. That was my toothbrush. The idiot. Okay. Anyway. Um, so that's all I have for this week. Yep. Unless you would like to add something. That's all I have as well. So, as you guys know, um, like we discussed in the beginning, we are moving out yeah. in two weeks, two and a half weeks. Mm-hmm. And so, because of that, we're not going to be with each other every day, which means that our schedule is going to be changing. Yeah. So, we will have two more regular episodes. Two or three more, yeah. Two or three more regular episodes. And then... That'll be the end of season one. Yeah. And we're going to do a summer break. We're going to do an episode in June, Mm -hmm. just like randomly as a bonus episode for like a summer fun time episode. We'll try and figure something out. I want to do High School Musical 2 personally. Okay. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, that sounds good. And okay. in July is Lily's birthday, so we're going to do a birthday special. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if we're coming back to school August or September, um, so we might do an August special and then just start again in September regularly. Mm-hmm. But make sure you stay tuned for the next two weeks and the special episodes this summer. Yeah. This has been fun. Good so time. we're going to make the season finale epic. I yes. don't know how yet, but we will, we will figure it out. <laughs> yes. um, keep up with the um, the interactions on Instagram. Um, yes. We need some more um, responses to questions, especially for games like this, because I think we only had one actual question from, like, Never Have I Ever from someone. <laughs> yeah, um, we really enjoy interacting with mm-hmm. everybody. Um, it's kind of what makes this fun, mm-hmm. um, is to know that people are interacting and want to hear us talk and stuff so yeah because we don't want to end this just yet like uh, i want to keep it going yeah no we have lots of ideas we have lots of ideas for special guests this next season Mm -hmm. which Um, will definitely be starting um, oh yes this next season we will have many special guests um we already have like two or three in mind so Yes. yes it's gonna be a great time exciting stuff so stay tuned good times all right Go check out the Instagram at popculturingmybff underscore podcast. Make sure to go check out our Anchor website. Um, you can still leave messages and stuff on there. All yeah, kinds we've of only fun had things. one of those so far. Um, we'd love yes. to have more just to hear you guys say Should nice we things. do a giveaway? We should talk about that. We should talk about that. We should because we might get more interaction if we do a giveaway. Mm. Mm. <gasps> season finale stuff baby season finale. all right we'll see you guys next week goodbye thank you for joining us this week on pop culturing my best friend tune in next time when we talk about more stuff and things please subscribe to our youtube channel and follow us on instagram at popculturingmybff_podcast underscore podcast for behind the scenes content and more